Introduction to law. Legislation. Legislation The term legislation has been derived from the Latin terms legis meaning law and latum meaning to make. Thus, legislation refers to the making of a law. Salmond defines legislation as legislation is that source of law which consists in the declaration of legal rules by a competent authority. According to Gray, legislation refers to the formal utterances of the legislative organs of the society. Types of legislation. Supreme. Proceeds from supreme or sovereign power in the state, incapable of being repealed. Subordinate. Proceeds from authority other than supreme and is dependent for its validity upon supreme legislation. According to Austin, Salmond, Dicey, Supreme legislation originates from notion of absolute sovereignty of the British Parliament. An act of the Parliament cannot be held void on ground of unreasonableness or any other ground. Separation of powers between the organs of the government, not fully observed in British setup. Parliament is supreme and the judges are bound by its acts. In Pakistan, there are certain restrictions placed on subject matter of legislation by Constitution of Pakistan. E.g. no laws can be made against. The injunctions of Islam no laws can be made against the fundamental rights federal legislative list subjects on which only the federal government can legislate constitution is supreme. All other laws are subordinate to it. According to Bodenheimer, Legislation requiring two-thirds road majority amounts to supreme, e.g., amendment of a written constitution such as Pakistan's. Legislation through simple majority amounts to ordinary, e.g., amendment of an uncodified constitution such as UK's. Federal. Federal, provincial legislation. Legislation on subjects vested in the authority of the Federation. Carried out by federal legislature. E.g. In Pakistan, Parliament can make law on matters provided by federal legislative list. Provincial legislation on provincial subjects by provincial legislatures. E.g. in Pakistan, Provincial Assembly can make law on matters not provided in federal legislative list. Prior to 18th Amendment the subjects were mentioned in concurrent list. Types of subordinate legislation. 1. Delegated legislation. Details of implementation and operation along with other provisions not contained in the statute are left to made. Decided provided for by experts who are going to make the statute functional. The objective is to cater for the organizational and technical issues within the field. Examples of delegated legislation. Executive from an administrative point of view. The executive is often delegated the power to provide detailed regulation in implementation of a statute. Judicial. Article 191 of the Constitution of Pakistan provides that acting within legal bounds Supreme Court can regulate the practice and procedure of court. Municipal. Local authorities delegated the power to make special laws for matters under their control. Autonomic legislatio. Power of persons or organizations to make rules essentially similar to laws in character. Example. Public universities, private corporations, associations etc. make by laws for the regulation of conduct, claims, membership etc. Unions, professional associations of lawyers, engineers, doctors make rules for discipline and professional ethics etc. Statutory interpretation broad methods. Roscoe Pound. 1. Recognizing enacted law as superior body of rules in comparison to precedent and resort to analogy on this basis. 2. Recognizing it as equivalent to precedent and resort to analogy on this basis. 3. Broad or liberal construction of the
letter of law so as to cover the matters in accordance with its intent for narrow or strict construction of letter of law which only covers what has expressly been provided. 1. Literal rule. 2. Golden rule. 3. Mischief rule. 4. Purposive approach. These rules each take different approaches to interpretation of the words in legislation. Some judges prefer one rule, while other judges prefer another. Some judges also feel that their role is to fill the gaps and ambiguities in the law whilst others think that it should be left to Parliament as the supreme lawmaker. Literal rule. Under this rule, the judge considers what the legislation actually says, rather than what it might mean. In order to achieve this, the judge will give the words in the act a literal meaning, that is, their plain ordinary everyday meaning, even if the effect of this is to produce what might be considered as an otherwise unjust or undesirable outcome. The literal rule says that the intention of Parliament is best found in the ordinary and natural meaning of the words used. As the legislative democratic part of the state, Parliament must be taken to want to affect exactly what it says in its laws. If judges are permitted to give a non-obvious or non-literal meaning to the words of parliamentary law, then the will of Parliament, and thereby the will of the people, is being contradicted. Lord Diplock once noted, where the meaning of the statutory words is plain and unambiguous it is not then for the judges to invent fancied ambiguities as an excuse for failing to give effect to its plain meaning because they consider the consequences for doing so would be inexpedient or even unjust or immoral. Duport Steele's Limited and others v. Sirs and others, 1980, 1 all er 529. Golden Rule. This rule is a modification of the literal rule. It states that if the literal rule produces an absurdity, then the court should look for another meaning of the words to avoid that absurd result. Lord Wensleydale in Gray v. Pearson, 1857, H.L. Cass 61, stated, the grammatical and ordinary sense of the words is to be adhered to unless that would lead to some absurdity or some repugnance or inconsistency with the rest of the instrument in which case the grammatical and ordinary sense of the words may be modified so as to avoid the absurdity and inconsistency, but no farther. Whilst the golden rule has the advantage of avoiding absurdities, it therefore has the disadvantage that no test exists to determine what an absurdity. Mischief rule. This rule requires the court to look to what the law was before the legislation was passed in order to discover what gap or mischief the legislation was intended to cover. The court is then required to interpret the legislation in such a way to ensure that the gap is covered. The rule is contained in Hayden's case 1584, 3 County Rep 7A, where it was said that for the true interpretation of legislation, four things have to be considered. 1. Common law before the making of the Act. 2. Mischief for which the common law did not provide. 3. What remedy Parliament used. 4. The true reason of the remedy. And then the office of the judges is to make such construction as shall suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. This rule gives the court justification for going behind the actual wording of the legislation in order to consider the problem that the particular legislation was aimed at remedying. At one level it is clearly the most flexible rule of interpretation, but it is limited to using previous common law to determine what mischief the legislation in question was designed to remedy. Purposive approach. Here, the court is not just looking to see what the gap was in the old law. It is making a decision as to what they felt Parliament meant to achieve. Lord Denning in the Court of Appeal stated in Magor and St. Melons Rural District Council v. Newport Corporation, 1950.
to all 1226, we sit here to find out the intention of Parliament and of ministers and carry it out, and we do this better by filling in the gaps and making sense of the enactment than by opening it up to destructive analysis. This attitude was criticized on appeal by the House of Lords. Lord Simmons called this approach a naked usurpation of the legislative function under the thin disguise of interpretation. He went on to say that, if a gap is disclosed, the remedy lies in an amending act. Parliament and Judiciary Some criticism is made about the way in which the rules of interpretation are used. In doing so, some commentators believe that the judiciary is usurping the role of parliament. The literal rule constitutionally respects parliamentary supremacy and the right of parliament to make any laws it wishes no matter how absurd they may seem. However, the judiciary has tended to overemphasize the literal meaning of statutory provisions without giving due weight to their meaning in a wider context. The use of this rule can sometimes lead to absurdities and loopholes, which can be exploited by an unmeritorious pursuer.